My name is Monica McHale. Welcome to our mental health meeting, a guide to support Coptic families during the pandemic. We are delighted to have you all join us. Um, and before we get started, I wanted to briefly announce a couple of housekeeping items. I would like to ask everyone to kindly mute themselves to avoid any unnecessary background noise so that we can all hear the speaker. We do have a chat box feature. Feel free to ask questions and or share your comments on there. Our panel will frequently monitor for questions, comments, and or concerns. I do wanna mention that we will only record the presentation portion of this meeting. So while Abuna gives his talk, you can turn off your camera if you want to do so. Uh, the discussions and Q&A will not be recorded. Um, thank you all for your patience and I would like to invite His Grace Sayyidina Abraham to welcome you all. Uh, we just before we start, we ask His Eminence to lead us in prayer, uh, beginning Sayyidina. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean, our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything and ask you to guide us during this uh, meeting through the intercession of St. Mary and all the saints. We can pray to pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. At the beginning, uh, we welcome all of you, welcome His Eminence, uh, Metropolitan Serapion, and uh, all the fathers joined us, and all the servants, and some of the families, and everyone joined us today. I just uh, say that uh, this uh, meeting is uh, like a guide to support families during the pandemic, and it's hosted by uh, the Los Angeles Di Diocese of Los Angeles, uh, Diaconia and Div uh, Development. Under the Ministry of True Physician, we have some sub uh, committees. One of the committee is uh, mental health, which we uh, gather today some of the servants. And um, uh, this event uh, hopes to offer support to family uh, units during continued uh, COVID 19 stress. And this event will address increasing uh, concerns for mental health related issues for all members of the family uh, as they uh, navigate new uh, roles and responsibilities and challenges. So uh, now we, I can invite His Eminence Metropolitan Serapion uh, to say uh, for us some uh, guidance and uh, some spiritual words uh, during uh, these um, uh, difficult times we are facing as a family. Uh, families and also as a church. Welcome, Sayyid. I am happy to join you in this meeting, even for any part of it, and also yani, appreciate the work of His Grace Abraham and all the servants, and also all the priests, and also to address this issue. Of course, we are in unprecedented situation of the pandemic COVID-19, which uh, didn't happen before, hopefully not to happen again. And of course, it uh, put a pressure on everyone. Uh, nobody is exempted from it, but of course, we are uh, maybe different degrees. And what is important is how to handle it. And part of it, it affects our the, the, the person, the life from various aspects. And one of this is mental, of course, affect the person uh, about what he's facing. And usually when we address this issue, we first by identify some of the uh, factors of the feelings uh, which address, which affect the person during this pandemic. I mentioned some of them, of course, we are all in the situation. Number one is the stress. Of course, to have a pandemic like this, it puts stress on the person and stress on uh, his ability or her ability uh, to take decision, to handle uh, job, handle life at home. And uh, because, of course, uh, yeah, what happened in this pandemic, firstly, the stress because of the threat of the disease. 
everybody concerned may be infected or some beloved one is infected. And all what we uh, hear about the precautions, which put on us uh, a lot of limitation dealing with each other. And of course, it is very stressful uh, situation. And I don't want to, to go more in, in this because you know, definitely we all experience it. Second is the worry. We are worried what will happen. We don't know. Maybe now with the vaccine, we could say this now at least there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but still, we hear different things. We hear people who uh, say they are not trust the vaccine, the people who are saying that is the vaccine is not 100%, and all this series, uh, whether it's true or not true. But definitely, it made people to worry. Now, the waves we have, Masan, we thought Masan, it's only for a few months. Now, it's, we are approaching uh, uh, about eight months or we don't know what will happen, whether the vaccine will end it or we will continue. Does this create a kind of worry in, in, uh, in the life of, of the people? Uh, the second, uh, the third thing is the feeling of boring. Yani people firstly be interested to be together at home, but now uh, yani they feel there is miss the life to go outside, the life to travel, the life to go to a restaurant. Uh, the, yani this is make the life, the routine of the life is a boring thing. And even when we started, for example, to have a meeting, a Zoom meeting like this, people were interested. And then uh, by the time people, they lost interest. They, they felt this as a boring thing. Especially we are in American society, people used to have always something new. They don't like things which is repetitive. Uh, one of the important things which uh, yani I address it from the church point of view is the, the feeling of guilt. Uh, people spread this is a punishment from God because of, of the sin of the society, because of the sin of the people, then God sent this pandemic as a punishment. punishment. Uh, of course, it is a difficult time, and in any difficult time and any event is to help us to review our life, to evaluate our life, and to repent. Yani we need to repent whether there is a pandemic or not pandemic. And also, uh, it, it is a good thing when we face a difficult situation as a personal level or at any level, that is, we evaluate our life and to repent. But to put the pandemic as general punishment of God, this is uh, contradict the way which God uh, uh, relate with, with, with people. So if we take the, the, the punishment, when there of course could be a punishment for individuals, for a group, for certain things. But for general punishment to the whole world, it, it, it is not uh, in harmony with how we understanding God as a just judge. And I take two examples from the Bible about the general punishment. The firstly, which all of them are related to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, when Abraham knew about God's God going to destroy the city because of the sin and evil things. He questioned this decision of God asking how the judge of the whole world did to destroy the just and the evil people. So he, he questioned this. And God accepted from him this question and asked him if there is a 50 righteous people. And then Abraham continued, if I was, is a way of bargaining, uh, until he reached 10. And Abraham stopped. Nevertheless, there was less than 10 in Sodom, which was Lot and his wife and his two daughters. And God sent warning for the people to leave, to repent, but they, they, they don't accept that. And he saved them. 
then he saved these righteous people from the destruction. Uh, and he destroyed it. So if we take the idea of the general punishment, I don't think that is in the whole world. There is, there is no four or five people who are righteous. Definitely there are more than that. Otherwise, yani, uh, yani, otherwise we give a general, a, a general judgment. That's why the idea of judgment, of, sorry, idea of punishment is not in the line with our standing of how God to deal with people, just how God to judge uh, the people. But again, it is as different between it's a call for repentance, yes. Many things to call for repentance. Not only, I mean, we don't need a pandemic to call for repentance, but uh, in our, our daily uh, life. So therefore, uh, this pandemic, we should turn it to be an opportunity. Uh, uh, because at difficult times in the life of the person or the nation on the world, it could be turn it to be an opportunity for us to, of course, the advance which, and how to respond to the diseases. Uh, we can look to many positive things uh, which we, we, we saw through, due, due, through this pandemic. And that the, the advance in technology must have to develop vaccine in a short time in comparison with, with before. The development of how to deal with a viral infection, how to deal with infect infections, how people cooperate, how we find that the cooperation with everyone is, is important. And when, when I read about the distribution of the vaccine, of course, the rich countries, they, they produce it, like the United States, China, Russia. And of course, they have the, the resources to have, a vac to have the vaccines. But what about the poor countries? So they may, may it, they, they ask it for a just distribution. And one of the justification of that, that is because if we only yani, give a vaccine for the rich countries and we leave the poor countries, then the infection will come to us. So we have to give them the vaccine in an affordable way, also for protecting us which I think is a sense of responsibility. It's important things. And then we feel the responsibility to each other. And we feel that is the well-being of us depends on the well-being of the others. And, and this is a change in the individualistic mentality that I just focus on myself, on my life. I don't care for the other so long I'm happy, so long I have the resources. We need each other. And whatever you have, but you still need. And that is how God created the first human society. When he created Adam, he did not create Eve until Adam felt the need to have someone with him equal to him. If Adam did not have this feeling of a need for the partners, uh, that is, of course, he will consider as a competitors and to fight with each other. And so therefore, uh, we can take from this pandemic, this is how we need each other. We have to cooperate and we cannot achieve things. And you, when you wear a mask, you wear a mask not to protect yourself, but also to protect the others. And you do it because you care for the others. And even if you feel you don't care or you are young and you don't feel, but, but caring for the other, that's one thing which we can take from this pandemic, the advance which, which, which happened. And we can take positive things. And one of the dealing with this situation is to try to draw a positive things among this very negative picture, which all of us feel it, because it is always there is a positive point in any negative situation. There is nothing which is completely positive, nothing is completely uh, negative. 
And we take this situation, which we, 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 we face, to be an opportunity for the, to address many issues, which we took it for granted and felt that is how life is so temporal, and you know, how such a virus, it changed the whole, the whole world and affected the, the, the countries, big countries, superpowers, and we, to, to give us a message how life is, is temporal. I'm, I'm sure that is during this workshop, you will find many ways uh, to identify uh, the effect of this pandemic and also to suggest some solution uh, to overcome it. God bless you and God bless this meeting. Glory to God, Amen. Thank you, Sayedna. Um... Uh, we aim at providing you all with an open and safe uh, space to talk. The goal is to support our community in discussing what really matters, and that is our health. And we aim to provide you all with helpful information today to help you navigate through these challenging times and provide you a platform of support. Uh, I want to welcome you all again and, and introduce our fabulous panel of mental health professionals. Um, I'm going to call on you, and if you guys can say hi so people know who you are. Introduce yourself. I have Abuna Jonah on with us. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, Julie. Hi. Uh, and then Angie. Hi, everyone. Okay, and Miriam. And then David, of course, with us. Did I miss anyone else that's on here? Um, and then we also have Andrew and Bishoy who are um, navigating the uh, Zoom meetings for us. Okay. Um, so I wanted to also uh, mention uh, for today's agenda, um, I want to let everyone know that we will have our speaker, Abuna Jonah, who will be speaking to us today covering our topic. We will then send out Zoom links for each breakout room in the chat after that. There will be uh, one for parents, one for individuals 18 years of age or older, one for teens, one for preteens, and one for 8 to 10 year olds. If you're having difficulties with the links in the chat box, we also have them emailed them out so you can refer to your emails. Um, we will have our breakout discussions will last up to 30 minutes and then we will ask you all to click back to your original zoom link and join us for q a and wrap up uh, again if anyone has any questions please uh, use the chat box uh, and now without any further ado i would like to invite our speaker abuna jonah who serves at saint george and is also a licensed clinical psychologist thank you abuna uh, for thank leading you. us to our topic thank you monica all right, everyone, um, uh, it's, it's a, a great pleasure to, uh, to be here today. Um, it's a, uh, uh, a great effort that's been uh, initiated by uh, the Department of the Diaconia um, and, the, and, and all the uh, wonderful servants who put a lot of effort and time into preparing and uh, planning for for this event so uh, I, on, on, on your behalf I would like to thank all of them and of course Sayyidna his eminence and the Sarabina and his grace and the Burhan. Um, but we are be, we are going to be discussing today is the um, uh, stress and resilience um, and how can we find support in our families uh, during this challenging and difficult time um, we thought that you know, as Sayyidna had mentioned, that it was going to, this, you know, Corona is going to be lasting few months. You know, initially they said once the the hot months of the summer hit, then uh, the virus is go, is not going to survive and things are going to get better. But we know now that this was not the case, and we are hit by a second wave of the pandemic that is uh, much more challenging than the first one. Um, so, especially during the time now where uh, our, our kids are, are finishing up with their school, um, some kids were going to school full time, some kids were going to school online, but nonetheless, I think they're all done with school now and they're at home 
and they're bored and they're tired and they want to be active uh, but yet with all that we're being told to stay home and stay put uh, and it's uh, and it's difficult um, what is what our presentation is going to be addressing today is um, the impact of uh, COVID-19 on our mental health, uh, stressors of COVID-19, uh, ways to cope, how to seek help, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and break out to the breakout rooms and have more discussions that would be related to uh, the different age groups uh, of, for our kids um, and teens or what have you. Okay. So, um, as Sayyidna had mentioned, that with COVID-19, uh, with the pandemic, there has been an increase of isolation um, and an increase of fear. We're not used to staying home. We're used to being out and about. We're used to uh, being active. We're used to uh, going and having fun at the parks and, uh, and at the restaurants, and we're going to the beaches, or we're going shopping. Now that it's Christmas time and we are hit with the reality that while well, the restaurants are closed, shopping is not, you know, everything is open. Uh, people are getting more and more sick. And we hear day after day on the news that the numbers are increasing. There's not enough beds in the hospitals. So with all that going in the background, there's an increase in fear. People are scared. And right, rightfully so. Fear, fear is a normal feeling. Fear is something that, a feeling that helps us to avoid situations that are dangerous. But too much fear then becomes a problem. So first, first of all, the first thing we need to be aware of is, <clears throat> excuse me, is that we, Yes, we are. We take our, our, our precautions. We uh, we take our uh, our uh, uh, um, um, the the um, the rules that are set the regulations seriously. We wear our masks. We uh, we avoid large gatherings. We uh, we stay within you know maintain social distance. Okay, and. Uh, and then, you know, we educate our, our, our kids on, you know, why is it important to do so? Uh, why, why is it important for us to, to be careful? Yeah. So, so we might find ourselves struggling personally, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um, and for many people financially, some people lost their jobs. So some people might be, might be struggling because all of a the sudden they cannot, you know, this is a time where people get together. We cannot get together with our friends and loved ones anymore. Um, you know, spiritually, some of our churches uh, are not holding services. So uh, I was, uh, someone was talking to me yesterday about how hard it is to not be able to attend a liturgy whenever he wanted to. And he was saying, you know, this is the one aspect of my life that, um, you know, that I was relying on to maintain my spiritual health. So we had to work through different avenues of, uh, you know, how can we be spiritually healthy with the restrictions that we have? Um, emotionally, people, there's, a, there's an increase in anxiety. There's an increase in uh, feelings of sadness. Of course, it comes with isolation. Uh, if people have to quarantine at home, um, so people are developing feelings that are not very positive. Physically, because we're not active as, we, as we're used to, some people are putting on weight. Some people are, uh, they feel that they, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, there's some type of, uh, of, of, of restriction because of, of, or impairment as a result of the restriction. Um, for many people, the financial part is huge because they lost their jobs or they have to stay home because they developed symptoms. Um, um, and, and in many cases, both parents have to stay home. 
and, and then where the income is going to come from. And sometimes government assistance takes a while for it to kick in. So I've been hearing a lot of people struggling financially and with, you know, finding, you know, means and to, to survive and to pay the bills and pay the rent and do what they need to do. Um, you know, finding balance at home is affected because the routine that, was, that we're used to is impacted. Uh, many of us are working from home, so sometimes we're able to do that. Uh, as, as in the case of many of our, our children have to do uh, um, homeschooling through Zoom, and that was very, very challenging, very difficult. Uh, you know, whether if it's younger children or older ones that, you know, have to do college through Zoom. Um, I had uh, one of our college students, she was struggling with her physics class because it was on Zoom. And, uh, and it was very, very hard for her. And, and so she almost dropped out, but thank God uh, she, uh, she, put, she pulled through and she, uh, and she got a good grade. But nonetheless, it was very challenging. Um, parents are learning to balance and juggle family needs and household tasks. Um, you know, trying to keep the kids occupied. Like Sayyidina mentioned, I have three boys. And man, what a, that's, a, that's a tough one, trying to keep them busy. Um, you know, they have so much energy. They, they, you know, sometimes I feel they're just bouncing off the walls um, just because, you know, they, they, they you know, they, they don't have the option of going to run around in the park or go kick a ball somewhere or you know, so, you know, having a, an avenue to let their energy out um, and being restricted inside the house is very challenging for them. So it's hard to come up with ideas, to come up with, uh, with uh, you know, new ideas for every single day because you know, if you repeat the same thing again, then all of a sudden, you know, life is very boring. Um, and so try to come up with the new thoughts, new ideas. Uh, I, we have never uh, used the, the application Pinterest as much as we have in the last you know, few months because it just, it, it, we, we were running out of ideas, we we're running out of thoughts and, uh, and, and we have to reach out. Uh, there are parenting groups that we have been reaching out to, uh, to, to kind of share and balance ideas off of each other. Find like a support system, even if it's not in person someone to call and, and, and kind of, you know, let things out. Uh, being able to call a friend and say, hey, you know, today was a tough day. The kids were running out of, you know, out of their mind today. I, I was struggling to keep them happy. Um, you know, they were whining for no reason or whatever it may be. Being able to have that is very important. Um, try to plan out for the day. So this way, you know what, what to expect. Um, children are learning virtually. They are part of their, you know, they are apart from their peers. Um, the, the initial, the initial phase of this school year, um, my oldest, uh, he started initially online, and then thank God they transitioned to school full time. But the first couple of months of being online, he kept on complaining about, you know, I miss my friends. I remember when me and my friends used to do this. Um, so we tried to, you know, have phone calls, frequent full phone calls with his friends and they can talk about things. Um, you know, uh, monitoring maybe some games that they can engage in together and socialize through that if possible. Um, you know, their inability to, to participate in recreational activities is, is very hard for kids, especially at a young age, because like I mentioned, they have so much energy that they want to lay out and it's healthy for them to, to let out. Um, but when they're not, then it negatively impacts them. Moving on. All right. Um, so common responses to stressors. Um, so in a pandemic, it's normal for individuals uh, such as children, adolescents, adults, and even older adults um, and the elderly uh, to feel stressed and worried. People are worried. 
about you know what happens if I if I if I, if I contract the virus, um, you know, am I going to live through it? What happens if uh, if my parents get it? Um, you know, are uh, are, are, are they going to be able to make it through? Um, what happens now that the hospitals are filled up? Uh, and then we start thinking about all these what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And we occupy our, our minds and our thoughts with all these wor worries and all these, uh, you know, uh, fears that as a result we be became overwhelmed and we, be we become stressed, we become scared, we, uh, it, it kind of acts as a mental block in our ability to think, to think logically through things, uh, you know, uh, the reality of the of the issue is that you know most people have mild symptoms. Most people live through it. Um, uh, fear of getting ill and passing away. It's, it's it's the fear. The fear of the fear of unemployment. What happens if I get sick? If my wife gets gets sick, um, then if I have to stay home, then what? Is, uh, is work going to give me time off? Is, uh, are they going to lay me off? What, what's what's going to happen? Are they going to pay me? Are they not going to pay me? What are the rules? Uh, you know, some people don't have papers. Then then what's going to happen then? Um, you know, I was talking to um, someone who, um, you know, he's still in the process of doing his paperwork and um, and he's so worried that if he gets sick, then uh, um, then his employer was not is not going to be entitled to pay him anything because he doesn't have papers. It's not documented. So it's uh, it's it, it's it's a real fear. Um, and so he was telling me that even if I get sick, I'm just going to suck it up and go to work because I need to put food on the table. It's 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 a it, it, it's a real fear. It's a real worry of um, of that. Um, so feeling powerless, feeling powerless as a result of unable to control the situation, not knowing an end result, not knowing that there is something that, that, can, that can be done about it, not having a vaccine, like Sayyidina mentioned, although there is a vaccine that, that, you know, uh, that is coming out, there is mixed news about its effectiveness. Um, you know, there is, you know, I, I, I heard there was medications that come out, uh, but yet, yet it's not widespread. People are so afraid of taking it. Hospitals are, are, are not, you know, are not uh, administering it. Uh, so it's, uh, there's, there, there's a, lot of, a lot of what ifs in the situation that makes the person feel very, very powerless. Um, you know, we, wa we wanna protect our family, we wanna protect our loved ones. Uh, and when we when we feel that we can't do that, then we, when we become scared, feeling of depression, helplessness, boredom, and loneliness. Um, people are depressed because they're not going out as much. They're not exposed to sunlight, for example. Uh, they're not they're not socializing the way the way the way they're used to. Social isolation leads to depression. So that's why I highly encourage to try to engage in as much, uh, um, you know. Uh, socialization, uh, even if it's through the phone calls, through a Zoom meeting, through a uh, you know a whatever it may be, the the platform we like to use, uh, but it's it's important to not to not be isolated, not 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 keep to yourself. Um, try to find things to do, so so you're not bored. Like I said, uh, you know, there's the app Pinterest, and it has so many ideas and. And I, ca I can't think how many times the app saved our night because it gave us something to do with the kids. Um, or just look up certain ideas, something, something to do with the kids, you know, uh, with the kids at home. Uh, you, can, you can do a project, you can, you can cook, you can, uh, you can clean, you can, you can do many other things. You can create something, you can watch a movie together, you can, you can cook a meal together. All these ideas that sometimes when we when we feel stuck, then we can't think about any in any anything else outside of this feeling of being stuck. So, um, you know, caregivers may feel concerned for their children who are home alone without care and support because of school uh, closures. You know, some people, like I said, they have to go to work and they have to leave their kids at home because 
there's no one to watch the kids and or they cannot afford the babysitter. Um, and and, that, and that, that's, that's very tough, very hard. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a real issue for many people. Uh, persons who are sick or quarantined may experience shame, guilt or stigma. Um, I have, you know, I've helped, I've, I've heard people say, um, you know, I don't want to tell people that I'm sick because then people are going to look at me different. People are not going to treat me the same. Um, you know, I, you know, people are not going, people are going to be uh, afraid to deal with me after the fact that, you know, after I, I test negative, for example, um, you know, if people feel ashamed as if they did something wrong, so they contracted the virus. Um, but all these feelings that we need to, we need to, to work through uh, and, and, and move past. So the more, the healthier we are mentally, the healthier we are physically, the healthier we are spiritually, it's going to imp impact how we do and how we deal with the situation if we are, God forbid, put in it. So when you hear, read, or watch news about an outbreak of an infection um, or, or infectious disease, one may feel anxious, worried, show signs of stress. Um, and as we mentioned a little bit ago, all these are normal because we are wired to protect ourselves. So it's okay to feel some of that. But if it becomes too much to the point that you know, we're not sleeping at night. We, we are, uh, you know, we can't stop thinking about it. We are not doing as well as we should. You know, we're, we're missing out on maybe uh, on work. Uh, it's impacting our school life. Um, it's impacting our relationships. Then it becomes a problem. Quarantining during the disease outbreak is linked to anxiety, depression, and some symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Um, especially with those who, um, you know, are in a uh, more vulnerable group who had to experience very uh, difficult uh, symptoms. And, uh, and, you know, some, some people were hospitalized, some people were, uh, you were in a very critical situation. Um, and, the, and, and, and that may result in uh, lingering symptoms that are similar to that of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, some research evidence even suggests that these symptoms could persist long time. So some, some of these symptoms may, may, may persist even after things are better. But the good thing is that these symptoms eventually resolve. Um, and if it, did, if it doesn't resolve, then maybe there would be a good time for us to talk to a professional to help us through through our feelings, and there's not there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame. There's no, uh, you know, there's no guilt uh, around having to talk to someone to uh, to resolve these these feelings that we don't know how to deal with them around our own. Um, the most important thing is know that you are not alone. You're not alone. Um, all of us are in are in this are in the same boat. All of us are struggling. All of us have some feelings of anxiety. All of us have some feelings of worry. Um, but of course, like, like I mentioned earlier, the, the, the healthy your spiritual life is, the healthy your social life is, the healthy your physical life is, then you're, you're more, you'll be able to deal with these feelings in a much more healthier manner than, than not. Um, these are just signs of stress. Um, and we're just going to run through them very quick. So it's just to, so, to, so you're, you familiarize yourself with these. If you're experiencing any of these, that's okay. Uh, there is there is a way to deal with it. Um, if you're not, that's still okay. There's nothing wrong with you. If you're not experiencing any of that, then that's great. Uh, be thankful. <laughs> but if you are, that's no problem. Um, uh, an increase or decrease in your energy and activity level. Sometimes we just, I don't want to feel, I don't want to do anything. Uh, because I'm just stressed um, and increased. Some people, uh, you know, there's an increase in, in you know, smoking or drinking uh, or the use of illegal drugs. 
which is all all very 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 wrong ways to deal with stress it actually makes stress a lot worse uh, regardless how you feel at the moment uh, the long-term effects of using tobacco or alcohol or drugs um, is is much worse than the stressful event itself uh, or anything that you might have to deal with the stress um, increase in irritability uh, birds of anger and frequent arguing people become very short fused uh, they're not as patient as they used to be having trouble relaxing or sleeping sometimes if we're thinking about something we're worried about it then we don't you know it's hard for us to go to sleep because we're thinking about it a lot um, there are you know there are uh, uh, exercises that you can engage in to help you relax um, and you know there is a sleep routine that you can do to help you sleep better um, crying frequently some people because there's there's trust they cry um, worrying excessively they're just worrying about all the what-ifs that we talked about you know a few minutes ago um, some people do they just want to be alone I just want to be alone I am I'm tired enough I don't have the energy to socialize I you know, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm short fused, and I I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to be alone. Careful, because once you allow yourself to become socially isolated, then it becomes a problem. Um, blaming other people for everything. Sometimes we don't take responsibility for things, and it's easier to point fingers at others than pointing the fingers at, at myself. Um, having difficulty communicating or listening. Um, because the person is being short fused, because the person is does not have energy, um, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to hear someone else's opinion. Uh, they don't have the time. They don't have the energy to to have a conversation. Um, having difficulty giving or, or accepting help, inability to feel pleasure or have fun, uh, because we're so worried. We're so preoccupied with. With the worry or the fear or or, or the or the or the anxious uh, thoughts that we are having, then it becomes hard for us to experience any type of pleasure um, or have any any type of fun and things that we uh, enjoy. Um, sometimes, you know, you start experiencing um, you know headaches, stomach problems, uh, um, you know, body aches. Um, you know, it impacts the heart rate. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes people have uh, uh, pre-existing conditions such as heartburn or shingles or eczema or, or many others, um, then these, these, these uh, uh, physical uh, illnesses become worse. So there's an increase in heart rate because our, our body reacts to stress. Stress is not just a thought in our mind. Um, our, our, our bodies react to it too. Uh, feeling on edge, difficulty breathing, people become very short breath, uh, people be, um, start having some shallow breathing. Um, so uh, um, so we, we increase heart rate, we start breathing very, uh, very shallow and uh, uh, difficulty sitting still, we, we have difficulty um, concentrating um, and we always have a sense of urgency because we are we are stressed so uh, all these are just symptoms of stress it is uh, you know it's you know some people have one of some people have multiple of uh, but like I mentioned the good thing is there is a way to deal with this this is not something that needs to last for a long time as soon as you start to notice that you're experiencing any of these symptoms let's let's get help let's talk to someone the reason we're having this presentation is, or, or putting in this effort is because we want people to be aware that they are not alone and there is help when, 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 when you need help. Um, and so, um, you know, to know that other people are experiencing the same thing you're experiencing sometimes gives us a sense of relief. Okay. So know how to relieve stress. If you or someone know how to show signs of stress uh, several days or weeks, get help. 
there is uh, there's going to be resources at the end of of this PowerPoint, um, and it will be helpful to uh, to you know know what op op options you have um, when you break out into your your uh, your breakout rooms. Uh, you can you can ask uh, the the person who will be helped to, uh, to navigate the breakout room for more resources. Uh, if you choose to, based on the different age group uh, that you will be uh, uh, discussing in that breakout rooms, but there's definitely resources for everyone. Uh, so there is help, it's available. All you need to do is just ask for it. Uh, you can manage and alleviate your stress by, by taking time to take care of yourself. Self-care is very, very important. Unfortunately, Growing up, we did not learn how to take care of ourselves. Um, and so we are told that you put yourself last and you don't take care of yourself, you take care of everyone else. But we know that if you don't take care of yourself, it's gonna be very hard to take care of anyone else. Um, so self-care is important. Um, set limits on how much time you spend reading or watching news about the outbreak. I cannot tell you, how stressful the news is. I was just talking to someone the other day who was showing many signs of, the, of, of, of stress. And at the end of our conversation, I asked this person, how much news are you watching? And I was not surprised to hear the news is on all day. Well, no wonder you're stressed. So sometimes you need a break from that. Because it's a cycle. Once, once, once you begin feeding into it, it does not stop. So do not feed you worry thoughts. Because this is not this is not helpful for you or for anyone. Focus on things in your life that are going well and that you can control. Um, you know, simple things at home, like decorate your home for Christmas. It's something simple, but it makes a big difference. Um, find people and resources you can depend on for accurate health information. Very important. Um, you know, please, Facebook is not a source of news. I cannot tell you how many messages I get every day. Abuna, did you, did you, did you see this? Abuna, did you know about this doctor from Italy who came out in the news and said everything was fake? Or, you know, this, uh, this talk show host who said, the, uh, the, the vaccine is just a way to control our human genes. Or just, I, I hear some very random weird things and it's all coming from nowhere, all nonsense. So let's, let's focus on the source and the resources that we get our health information from. Talk to your doctor, simple as that. Um, but no, hearing, hearing multiple people from multiple places who may not know what they're talking about is very challenging and it causes so much stress. Abuna, Juna, just really quickly, we have um, limited time, so maybe around 1.30 we can wrap up the presentation. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, I apologize. No worries, you're fine. Okay. Um, so, way to cope. Uh, pay attention to your body and how you feel. Um, Learn to relax. Um, sometimes relaxing means by the door, and that's okay. Um, and sometimes relaxing means, you know, let's do some push-ups. Let's uh, let's do something different at home. Let's let's uh, let's bake a cake. Um, uh, let's make sushi at home. So uh, it's uh, you know it, it's it's a different way of relaxing. Um, take time to renew uh, your spirit through, uh, of course, prayer. Some people do meditation through music. Uh, you know, some, some people say classic music is very helpful to them, by all means. Um, please, I cannot emphasize prayer enough. Prayer is very, very, very powerful in our life. It's the source of our spiritual life. It's the connection between us and God. Please do not neglect your prayers, especially during this difficult time. Um, you know, eat healthy. Make sure you eat healthy, not because you're staying home and you're not going to be going out for a while. You just, you know, focus on junk food. Still eat healthy. Uh, drink, drink a lot of water. 
avoid sodas and oh, you know too much sugars, uh, excessive amount of caffeine. Uh, try to avoid that. Uh, you know, get enough sleep, rest, get physical exercise. Even if it's just if it's just at home, there are so many videos, exercise videos online or on YouTube that you can pull up and enjoy them with your kids. Um, talk to someone, seek out, you know, family, friends, church communities, um, and or if you need mental health professionals, and we have so many in our community. Tips for parents, uh, create structure, a schedule for, for your day would be helpful. Um, you know, schedule time to be with your kids, do something fun, have meal time together is important. Uh, talk about different things. Uh, challenge yourselves with different questions. Um, you know, embrace technology, use FaceTime, call family, friends. Be mindful of, of how to talk to your kids about COVID-19. Um, do, not, do not fill the kids' minds with fear and, and anxiety because kids don't know how to manage that. Um, so be mindful of what you say. Even if you don't say it directly to them, what you say around them is very important. Um, if your child is acting out, it may be their behavior to, to try to communicate to you that they are anxious, but they don't know how to say it. They don't have to communicate it. Um, and instead of getting angry, help them explore what's going on in their mind. Um, you know, take time for yourself. Even if you have to put the kids, you know, early to bed and take time for yourself to just sit with your husband, your wife, read a book, listen to music, or, you know, simply just quiet time would be very helpful. Just a, a, a simple example of what a schedule would look like. Uh, tips for your youth, um, you know, make a list of fun activities to do at home, like we said, talk to your parents about your feelings, uh, set some structure for yourself to help balance school and work now that, you know, everybody's on vacation. So uh, what, what are we going to do with our time is important. FaceTime friends, even if you can't meet, um, you know, there are very helpful music and podcasts that you can listen to and it helps you, you know, develop good habits and skills. I was just reading uh, an article today about a 10-year-old uh, um, boy in New York who took time, uh, who took advantage of the time of being at home during the pandemic and he just wrote a book and uh, it was on the news. It's just very interesting. Um, cook with your parents and develop, you know, watch, watch new skills, develop new skills, um, you know, take a walk, exercise, these are some of the resources that we are uh, that we were mentioning earlier today, um, and uh, that with that we conclude our presentation. Are there any questions? All right, thank you so much, Abuna. Um, I think thank right you. now we will go ahead and join the breakout rooms. If everyone can, Abuna, if you can um, stop sharing. Yes. Um, all the links will be showed right there on your group chat. Um, the parent group, go ahead and click on your group and join them. We will have around 15 to 20 minutes and then we will come back um, to our main event. All right.